Yellow everyone, today I'm going to be drawing with every single yellow art supply that I own. Here are all my yellow art supplies, let's draw something. Before I can draw something, I gotta figure out what that something is going to be. So I did a couple sketches trying to figure out an idea of what yellow means to me. And in the end, I correlated it with happiness and the word happiness made me think of being a kid and being a kid made me think of hanging out with your parents. So I decided to draw a kid and their dad. Then I simply swatched out all of my yellow art supplies to see what each of the art supplies actually looked like in use rather than just on their caps. Then I had this really long skinny swatch paper of all my art supplies and I was ready to start the illustration. Starting with this yellow Colorace colored pencil, I began sketching out the basic structure of the illustration, like where the heads are gonna be, where the bodies are gonna be, and what the overall layout of the paper will be. Now I'm quite aware that this is not picking up on camera because in fact, it wasn't even picking up in real life. So I switched to a darker Colorace colored pencil this time in the color canary yellow, and this was much more easy to see, still faint, but you know, visible. And so, that's kind of necessary. So I slowly started defining the illustration, finding the location of the legs, and one cute little thing that I decided to do in the process of drawing this was the kid on the dad's shoulders actually has a ball cap that's flipped around and I thought it'd be really really funny to show like the generational gap and the difference between ages and generations by giving the dad a ball cap but having it facing forward. Now this probably isn't accurate for like today, like I feel like dads today wear their hats backwards, but it's still funny and cute and I feel like it gives it that dad vibe. Now the last thing I want to say about the sketching process before we move on to the next art supply is that the pose and the layout of the page felt a little lopsided and like leaning towards the right. So I decided to give the kid like a sweatshirt wrapped around his hips and blowing in the wind. <laughs> this just adds some weight to the left side of the page and fills in that white space. The next art supplies I used was also a colored pencil. This is the Kui Noir Dry Marker. It's very, very vibrant and the brightest and lightest yellow that I own. It's actually very highlightery and stays very vibrant even over time. So I used this to color in these sections of the drawing that I wanted to be the lightest and I just like scattered that among the drawing so that there'd be contrast throughout. Next art supply that I used was the St. Petersburg White Knights watercolor. This was in the color yellow ochre and I used this for all of the areas that I wanted to be the darkest. So you'll see I'm kind of jumping around with light to dark and I'm really trying to play up the contrast because every time I do one of these using every single color art supply that I own. <laughs> Contrast is like my biggest flaw and when it comes to the color yellow there's not usually a whole lot of contrast there so I was very very extra super duper whooper worried about this illustration in particular so I was trying to take every precaution to cram as much contrast into this piece as possible. <laughs> I'm actually kind of proud of what I do at the end but we'll save that for later. <laughs> Next up, I use this Ohu acrylic paint marker. I'm actually not sure if they make these anymore, but I'm really happy with the pigment of these. Like this one in particular is like a bright mustard color and I just like it. <laughs> so I used it to uh, fill in the sweatshirt and then the shoes and maybe a couple other locations, but it creates like a really nice flat wash of color and I just really like them. They're very similar to like Posca pens. This is the Ohu alcohol based marker in the color 32, which is also the darkest and thinnest yellow pigment that I own. So I used this actually as a liner using the bullet nib and just outlining all of the features that I wanted to stand out. This was a little difficult because it was bleeding on the paper that I was using and I'm using some pretty heavy duty paper, but I don't know, it was creating like a little bit of spider webs along the lines but I really didn't have an art supply that I could use instead of this. So I had to just go with the flow and let it happen. Regardless though, it looks way better with this than it did without. <laughs> like you can actually see what the illustration is instead of it just being a bunch of yellow blobs with um, some yellow streaks in between them. Now I feel like we're finally like heading in the right direction. And at this point I got really, really excited and I had a lot of art supplies left to go. So that's a good thing. <laughs> oh, man. So here I'm actually switching back to the old Colorace pencil because I accidentally added the line art for the whole leg, that kid's right leg. So there was no room to put the dad's hand so he could hold on to him, right? So I had to be a little creative here and I decided to have that hand just like spread open wide like he's like talking with a gesture while also still trying to like maintain balance with the kid on his shoulder. <laughs> it was a little last minute and not what I wanted, but 
I think I made best out of a bad situation. <laughs> Then I moved on to another Ohu alcohol base marker, this time in the color 44. I used this to add some dark shadows here and there throughout the illustration. Then I moved on to another Ohu marker, this time in the color 37, which is a little bit lighter. And I used this to shade a lot more, including the dad's arm on the right. I just filled in the whole thing. I thought it would be interesting and really add some depth to the illustration. And I also used it to like shade a little bits of the face as well. Then I use these two Copic sketch markers. One is Y0000 and the other one is Y000. Yeah, I got that right. I think when I mentioned the Kuinor dry marker that I said it was the lightest color, I meant it was the brightest color. These are my lightest colored yellow art supplies. So I tried to take advantage of that and really add shading to the face, like little bits where I wanted there to be a little bit more color. And I kind of just switched off between these two depending on whether I wanted it just a little bit darker or just a little bit lighter because these colors are so very, very similar, but they're also very, very different from that Ohu marker that I used to line everything. So we're getting that contrast that I'm looking for. So. Yay. Then we move on to the big daddy. This is the Crink K75 in the color yellow. I love this thing. It's stinky, but it's cool. <laughs> this has a very big chisel on it. So I use it to color in very large sections of this illustration, parts of the starburst. So when I was thinking yellow originally, when I was sketching out my ideas, I kept thinking of like the sun, obviously it's very bright, like the color yellow. <laughs> so I thought a starburst was in order for the illustration. That was the idea behind the background. And I use this mostly just for the top half. I thought it'd be cooler if it got lighter as it got to the bottom of the illustration, you know, just to add some fun texture and maybe even a little contrast. Then I used the Crayola Signature Blender Marker in the color Canary, and I have completely forgot how vibrant this one is. It's very similar to that Kuyanor highlighter dry marker thing. So I decided to use this since it was a brush tip to try and add some like, I don't know, texture to that starburst. Sometimes I would just fill in part of the section. I'm trying to keep that background starburst from being too harsh and a little bit more organic. Then I moved on to two more Copic sketch markers. Biggest difference between Copic sketch markers and Ohu alcohol-based markers or basically any knockoff is that with Copic markers, you can buy much lighter tones, which you build upon each other and get them to be darker. Whereas when you buy one of the knockoffs, they just start very dark and saturated and it's kind of hard to have that contrast. So in doing this illustration, I wanted to take advantage of that. So I use these markers for all of the shading, like the first preliminary shading, you know, besides what I used to the Ohu marker for already. You'll see how much lighter these are compared to the lightest yellow of the Ohu markers. Like it's very, very different. And when I use markers, I really like to start light. So that's why I really like Copic markers. These are also really handy when shading in the face because of that brush nib and I can kind of like feather it out and it's not, doesn't look like a super harsh circle when I add like blush to the cheeks, but it's a little bit softer and rounder. Now, even though I feel like I had markered out this illustration and it didn't need any more, I had three more Ohu markers that I had to get through. I had 34, 35, and 45. And I began dispersing these amongst the illustration. <laughs> I decided since these have those bullet nibs to use these to add texture to the dad's shirt. So I kind of just made up a little pattern in my head and began drawing that all over the shirt. In some areas where there was shading, the lighter Ohu markers didn't work. So I had to switch to a darker one. So that is how I used all three of them. I basically just used the one that fit the job depending on where on the shirt it was because of that shading. The first paint of the illustration, this is the America Kana acrylic paint in the color cadmium yellow. I was kind of excited about using this and like globbing it on so that there was like texture to the drawing, like a little bit of a 3D effect. I thought it would stand out a little bit more from the colors that I had used. Like there's a little bit of contrast between this and the crink marker, but not as much as I was hoping for. So I really played up that like globbing effect so that it had, you know, physical texture and physical contrast between it and the paper. I didn't want like any two of the starburst sections to be the same. This is the Dr. P.H. Martin Bombay India ink in the color yellow. 
These inks are really vibrant, kind of like liquid watercolor, but they're waterproof when they dry. And I like how you can get a really large, even wash with them. But I first tried experimenting them on top of the Kui Noor dry pencil, so those lighter sections of the starburst. And it was kind of fun because it like feathered out the darker sections of the starburst, but it was also its own color. So it just kind of added a, a little bit of a hue shift because it's not that same orangey yellow. It's a little bit more of like a bright daffodil yellow. Moving on to this Winsor & Newton brush marker. I believe it's actually the color gold, but shh. <laughs> it's definitely the orangiest of the yellows that I use in this drawing. I used this to darken up the lower half of the starburst. I liked that it had a different hue to it, which probably means it doesn't belong in this drawing, but you know, it's very red and I like that. I didn't use this that much, so it felt like a cop-out. So then I just started like speckling little dots at the bottom half of this to add some kind of like texture. So it's not just a bunch of straight lines of starburst, but there's like, you know, something there. Next up are these two Sharpies. I have an extra fine and a fine point. And honestly, these don't really stack up next to the other art supplies that I use. You honestly can't even see that I used them, but here's proof that I did. All right, now let's move on to the next one. <laughs> which were these two pencils, the Derwent Ink Tense in the color Sun Yellow and a Gold Faber Aqua. These are both watercolor pencils. They have a slightly different hue, but I kind of use them the same way. I would um, sketch sort of close to the two characters and then use water to bring that color away from them and kind of create a gradient behind them. And this added a little bit of atmosphere. It's very subtle, but you know, it's there. These are my final two St. Petersburg White Knights watercolors. The light one is cadmium yellow and the darker one is cadmium yellow medium. I used the cadmium lemon to lighten up the dark sections of the starburst that were near the character. Again, I feel like this is just adding some atmosphere and making them look like they're standing in front of the starburst instead of like being engulfed by it. And with the darker cadmium yellow, I just added some more stripes to the starburst. <laughs> Hashtag cop out. So this is the core watercolor. It's in the color Nickel Azo Yellow. And this thing was a lifesaver. <laughs> so basically when you take it out of the tube, it kind of looks like a little poop. And you can see it right there in my palette. But then when you add water, it becomes this like really bright, almost gold yellow. And it's really, really pretty. But I didn't want that. I wanted that poop color, right? So first I used a larger brush and I used this to darken up the areas of the drawing that I wanted to be darker, like the hair. I thought that would just be cool to like really push that it's father and child and have them have the same color and have it a little bit different than like, you know, the rest of the drawing. It's a little bit different. So yeah, used that poop color for that. But then I had an idea. Now that there was like contrast between the hair and everything else, I felt like, ooh, now it's like parts of the face look like they're blending in with the rest of the face and it's not very obvious and there's no contrast there. So I took a tiny itty bitty little brush and I used this to try and actually draw in the details with it. Now, I am not the best with a brush. Brush pens have never been my best friend. I have a shaky hand and I just don't understand how much pressure they require, but I decided to try it anyway. <laughs> and they're very shaky lines, like they're not fantastic, but I think I'm improving. Like this is not bad, okay? <laughs> like just don't look too close, but I control the camera and I'm not gonna show you that close. <laughs> So it's gonna look good. <laughs> but boom, look at the difference, man. Now there's like contrast there. It's not all one flat tone, you know? This is the Faber-Castell Polychromos color pencil. I have no idea how to use these things. I think they're fancy. <laughs> this is in the color Strogleb Cream. I just Googled it. Apparently that's pronounced Strogleb. 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 I should be able to say this. I have German blood. Strogleb. Mm, Whatever, one of those has to be right. <laughs> All right. Anyway, it means straw yellow. So there's your fun fact for the day. Anyway, moving on. This is the Stedler Tri Plus Fine Liner. I was hoping this would be a little bit darker, but it really wasn't. So this is another one of those uh, art supplies that I, I used it, but uh, you probably can't tell that I did, but I have physical proof that, uh, yeah, look, I'm using it, but. <laughs> Yeah, that was about it. Now these last two art supplies were both art supplies that I was kind of looking forward to using because I thought they'd actually make a difference. Anyway, this is the whole bean gouache. It's just in the color lemon yellow. Now cool thing about gouache is they're very opaque, kind of like acrylic paints, but they work like watercolors. 
And this one is just such a bright, happy lemon color. So I used this and tried to layer over top of things that were darker than it to try and give some like brightness and contrast to those areas. I also used it for like little details on the shoes. And to add even more texture to that background, I added some more shapes. So here I'm adding some bigger circles, like lower on the bottom, I added little like polka dots. And then here at the top, I'm actually using big circular dot shapes. And this is just, you know, breaking up that starburst pattern, making it a little bit more intriguing. Now the final art supply that I'm using is this, I believe it's a Kuretake yellow gold watercolor. Now the cool thing about this is if you let water sit on it, it becomes kind of pasty and almost opaque. And it's also so glittery and shiny, very metallic and pearlescent. So this is really good for like accents. So I use this to make the dad's hat <laughs> shiny gold because he's worked his whole life and contributed to Medicare and paid his taxes and he's earned a solid gold ball cap. I don't know. Does there have to be a reason? <laughs> I just wanted to make like certain areas shiny and the hat I thought would be a cool thing to be shiny. I also painted over the watch, so the metallic bits of the watch, so that those would be shiny as well. And then since I couldn't think of any other places on the character to make gold, <laughs> I decided to color in the lower half of the background all in this shiny gold, but like I tried to dilute it a little bit so it wasn't super dark, but I just wanted it to have that like sheen. So I filled in the bottom half of the background with that. That way there's contrast between it and the character. So the character's not shiny and then the background is shiny. And then I also added some like circles up at the top to add some like shiny bits up there too. And after that, it looked like this. Look, look at that shininess. It's like, how do you stop tilting it back and forth? It's just so satisfying. <laughs> and the last thing I did before finishing off the drawing was take that dark Ohu marker and go over the lines again, because after using like Copic markers and other things on top of it, <laughs> they'd kind of like blend it out and become less sharp. And I just wanted to sharpen those up. And I also like wanted to redo the arm hair for daddy-o there. <laughs> and then it looked like this. This is the finished illustration. I hope it just screams and explodes joy all over you because that's what the color yellow says to me. <laughs> Probably could have went a little crazier with the facial expressions, but I also wanted it to feel just happy. Like you're not laughing hysterically. You're just happy. These are all the art supplies that are yellow that I own. I actually went through a little bit of a purge and I still have this many. I need to do purge part two. That's it. That's my drawing. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me on this journey where I used every single yellow art supply that I own. I'm slowly working my way through the rainbow. We'll get there. <laughs> what color should I do next? Oh shoot, wait, I forgot to sign this. <laughs> Let me do it out real quick. So here it is. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!